Hello, welcome to another episode. I'm doing a revised video on the three volt motor overview that I did a few weeks ago. I had made some mistakes in that video and also wanted to add some information to the video uh, to improve upon it. So in those vid videos I was discussing um, the type of motors you typically find in the vintage toys in the late 70s, early 80s, made by Tomy and also by Milton Bradley. And uh, so I want to go over again how you identify these motors. There's typically two types. Um, how to test the motors, what a bad one sounds like, and where online you can buy them and what local stores you can find them at. I'll put a list uh, at the end of the video of toys that you'll find these particular motors in. Uh, it's actually very simple to test, very simple to, I think, replace, and um, really easy to uh, locate also. You're going to find there's two types of DC hobby motors that are predominant in the vintage Tomy games, at least in my experience. They're known as a can, round or brush motors. The larger of the two motors on the left is identifies as an SVM 260, SVM being the Stevens motor identifier, the, or an RE 260, which RE being the Mabuchi motor identifier. The smaller motor on the right is an SVM 140 or an RE 140 respectively. You can do an internet search and you can find the technical specs on each of these motors. It gives them their uh, power uh, performance and the length and everything if you need to match them up. Okay, so if you need to buy a hobby motor, there's a lot of resources out there and it's, they're actually very easy to locate. You can start with your local hardware stores like Home Depot and Lowe's. They have them in a section near the nuts, screws, and bolts in a drawer usually labeled hobby projects. And I've only found the larger motor on the left, but you never know. Uh, they may have a variety of different stores. Of course, there's Radio Shack. Again, I've only found the larger motors there, um, but it, and also they have a, as most people know, a variety of electronic components. But two great places to start. StevensHobby.com. They're out of New Jersey. They have a large selection of hobby motors, from the smallest high-speed ones, up to like a SVM 280, larger than the 260 you see there. Uh, pretty reasonable prices and good shipping and you know, good guarantees. Great place to start. And of course, there's eBay. You'll find a variety of motors on there and even under the Mabuchi name too. So uh, there's about four places there I use typically and hopefully they'll help you out in locating one if you need to buy one. Okay, now that we know how to identify the motors and where to buy them, I'm going to show you two ways of testing them. Uh, it's very simple, but also I would need to show you how to identify the negative and positive uh, leads on the motor, the polarities. Because um, if you get the polarity backwards, uh, the game's going to move backwards. It's going to be very difficult to play and comical. So you have two leads off the end here that you're going to solder the positive and negative wires to. You'll notice that only one side of the motor has vents. And this typically is the negative side based on the, uh, the diagrams that come with the motors and everything. And when you test the motor, you'll, you'll see that it's always the negative side. So of course, and this is positive. Now sometimes they're marked, you have to get a magnifying glass or catch the light correctly, they're marked negative positive. There's some motors I buy that don't have them marked. Um, you'll have to go buy the diagram on the packaging or just test it with batteries. But most likely the vent side is your negative side. Okay, so now we're ready to actually test these out. There's two simple ways of doing it. You can use anywhere from a, a, a AA batteries you can use these C batteries or all the way up to a D battery to test the motors. I typically just use a D battery configuration because I keep them available. Um, but it doesn't take a whole lot of juice to get these things working. So the simplest thing to do, if you, if you only have uh, two sets of wires, um, what you want to do is you need to take one set of wires. Doesn't you know colors are irrelevant at this point, you're just testing it. So you want to tape one end here to the positive side of the battery and take the other lead on, tape it to the other battery and you want to put it on its, uh, the negative side okay just don't touch the batteries yet so you can go ahead and get the wires you don't have to solder them in you can just, as long as you're making contact with them you can kind of lock them in place so you get the wire here Sure, you're seeing it. I get him. I kind of get it locked in the positive side. Got to thread the needle here. Okay, they should be making contact. 
So all you do now is you just take your fingers and you touch the two batteries. Of course it didn't work that time because the positive came out. You're going to have to bend the wire to keep it in there. Okay. There, well, I hold it in my hand. Okay, so once you touch the batteries, you hear it moving. So that's a quick way of testing it. But there's this little battery holders that you can use. I find them at Radio Shack. Um, very inexpensive. So um, There's these uh, battery holders and they come in C battery sizes and also AA. It's very simple. I actually attached alligator clips because uh, when they come brand new they're just there's no clips on the end. You have to attach your own alligator clips. So I just like to keep this loaded um, off to the side of the device and I can take these alligator clips and I can reach them into the device if I have to or if I have the battery out. Again, clip the negative, you know, in this case the black lead to the negative side and I can clip the positive or I can just touch it at this point. I don't even have to clip it on. Again, it's just a quick test. You can hear the motor running feel the motor shaft spinning. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I mean, that's all you have to do to test a motor. And that's a good motor. You notice this, this is a bigger motor, has a little bit no, more noise to it. But this smaller motor I took out, it was starting to go bad. Um, I had a much noisier modem bef motor before, but uh, this one's still noisy enough. You can tell that the bearings and everything inside bushings are going bad. So you can hear how noisy and like grind. It sounds like metal grinding. This motor is wearing down. Um, definitely not uh, not a good idea. So to keep it in there. So that's just a quick way of testing um, testing a motor. So before um, we pretty much conclude it, I give you a list of toys that have this. The um, there's a couple of quick troubleshooting tips on motors. So you say you get a game that's 40 years old, 35, 40 years old, and the motor's not moving, um, but you don't maybe you don't have a batteries available. If you can get the motor out or get to it and just try to turn this motor shaft a couple times in both directions, um, or even the clockwise direction, what happens if motors aren't used for a while, they tend to uh, stiffen up or uh, lock up, and this is help, you know, uh, break break it loose and get it spinning and sometimes that's all it needs and uh, you, it may still be bad and probably still needs replaced but you can at least troubleshoot or isolate it to the fact that the motor is uh, isn't working um, there's another tip if you can't get the motor out or it's hard to reach and I've done this with a uh, particular toys before is get a screwdriver particularly something with a flat tip and get, you know, if you need a really long screwdriver or whatever it takes to reach the motor, if you can get to it and just tap on it, you know, hit it a couple times. Um, I prefer a little larger tool. Don't hit it so hard to dent it, but just try to tap it as hard as you, you know, hard enough um, just to try to loosen the bearings a little bit or the brushes or that inside that way uh, to get it going. I've had success with that on a... Uh, an old vintage toy once. I didn't want to take it apart and take all the stickers off and I was able to reach a long screw, flathead screwdriver in there and give the motor a couple of good hits and it was working. Um, so that pretty much is that as far as um, testing and identifying the motors what a bad motor sounds like. So um, here is a list of uh, toys you'll find these uh, particular motors in. The SVM 260 and the SVM uh, 140. Okay, so here's a short list of vintage Tommy games and some other toys that use these particular motors. This is a Tomic Arcade Pinball, it uses a larger 260 motor. I do have a repair video for this game on my channel, so check it out. This Digital Derby uses a smaller SVM 140 motor, as does the Hit and Missile game. And I will be doing a repair video for this game in the near future. Two Tommy games without any motors is the Digital Diamond Baseball, kind of a wind-up toy with buttons, LED light. People tend to think there's a motor in there sometimes, as they do with Blip. Again, no motor. A wind-up mechanical toy, buttons, LED light, just no motor. 
Um, another toy you may find this uh, particular motor is the vintage toy slot machines like this one from the Waco Toy Company, dates early 1970s, and a popular Milton Bradley Big Track actually uses two SVM 260 motors to drive the wheels. Uh, very cool. So that concludes this uh, overview of the DC uh, hobby motors. Uh, if you found it helpful, hit the like button. And if you like vintage toy repairs and uh, vintage computer games, subscribe to my channel as I will be adding more content here in the coming months. And as always, thank you for watching.